I'm going to show you how to set the camera up to do your HDR work. And you already have a little bit of practice because for HDR work, what you need to do is take three shots. You can take more than three shots, but three works just fine. And that's a good starting point when you first start doing HDR work. One of your shots needs to be underexposed, one needs to be overexposed, and one needs to be the correct exposure. Well, you already did that when we practiced exposing our picture using manual mode. And one of the key things you want to do when you do HDR photography is you want to make sure that your aperture stays constant. Now, it's really good to use a tripod with HDR work because we're going to take three pictures of the exact same scene. It's not like panorama where we're taking pick multiple pictures of different areas of a scene and then we're stitching them together to make a wider picture than we could with a single picture. We are taking three shots of the exact same scene, so it's good if we can keep our camera aligned. One of our pictures is going to be underexposed, one of our pictures is going to be overexposed, and one of our pictures is going to be the correct exposure. And what the HDR software is going to do, it's going to combine those three pictures into one and give you more dynamic range or more optimal exposure than you would get using just one single shot. It's going to be easier to do HDR work if your camera has auto bracketing. But I know at least all of your cameras have a manual mode and you can bracket your pictures that way, just like you did with your earlier assignment. You can't hand hold your camera if it has that bracketing mode. If it doesn't, you're absolutely going to need a tripod to do HDR work. It used to be that you really couldn't do HDR work without a tripod, but the software has gotten a lot better at aligning images, and especially if you have a fast enough shutter speed and auto bracketing, you can do it handheld. Now, if your camera doesn't have auto bracketing, or if you just want to try using a tripod and you don't have one, let me know and I can let you borrow one of mine. Most DSLRs will have auto bracketing mode, but some of the starter DSLRs even don't have that auto bracketing function. So now let's show you how to set up the camera. Okay, so the first thing you're going to look for on your camera is a button that's got this little bracket sign on it, and usually it's on the timer button. On this camera, it's on the top. On some cameras, on my other camera, it's back on this dial back here. So you can just kind of look for it on your camera. If you've got a bridge cam camera, it may be embedded in your menu somewhere. Now, when you bracket your photos, you want to be in aperture priority mode. So I'm going to make sure I am there. And if you've got it on a tripod and you want a nice sharp picture, going at f11 or even higher, um, it's, it's kind of a good place to be. But if you're hand holding, you're going to want to have more speed. I don't want my ISO set to auto on this especially on a tripod, you're going to want to make sure that you have a nice low ISO. I'll put it at 100. And I'm going to set my uh, aperture to f11. If your camera has that bracketing mode, you're going to want to use that for your HDR work. If you're using a tripod, do take advantage of that and use a low ISO because high dynamic range photography, if you've got noise in your picture, will definitely bring that those noise levels out. So depending on your camera, uh, I mean with this camera it has pretty good noise levels. It's a full frame camera. I could go up to 400 or so and get n virtually no noise, but since I'm on a tripod, I'm going to keep it down at 100. It really doesn't matter if my shutter speed is slow. Although if you've got a little bit of wind like we do today, you might want to keep your shutter speed a little faster. If I stick with F11 there, I've got an awfully sh slow shutter speed. So let me put my ISO up a little bit. Let's actually go to 400 on this. Usually when I'm doing HDR work, I really want to have a wide depth of field and like staying at F8 or higher. But if I'm hand holding, I'd probably go lower so I didn't have to deal with camera shake. And now to set up your bracket, you press your bracketing button, which is on the top on mine and you should get a menu on your screen. Your bracketing usually set, has your timer function and whether or not you want to do continuous shooting or single shot shooting. I have several bracketing modes on this camera, but a lot of them won't. If you have both continuous and single bracketing, choose the continuous. If you have this setting, I would choose a 
plus or minus two stops on my bracket with three shots. That's the recommended setting. Now my old camera would only do plus or minus seven tenths of a stop and it did just fine with the HDR work. Most of the stuff that's posted on my webpage was done with that camera. So it's fine to work within the limitations of your camera. So now I can press the shutter and if I just hold it down it'll do all three shots. If you don't have auto bracketing you can go to manual mode on your camera like we did before. Make sure that your meter's showing, and this meter's a little different than the meter was on the last camera I showed you. I know a lot of you have a meter that looks more like this. Start out again, keeping your aperture constant. So you can go to app back to aperture to change your aperture to whatever you want. And I'm going to put it down to f8, and then I'm going to put it back to manual mode. You see the M's over there on the screen and set it at the correct exposure first. Can we see it says zero. We just slide our wheel over till we're at minus two. Take a picture, slide our wheel over, take one at the right exposure, slide our wheel over until we're at plus two, take another picture. Okay, so now I've bracketed my photos. And if you do it that way, so you don't get more pictures than you want to deal with, it might be good if you have your camera in single shooting mode, so you don't take two or three with each shot. Now I'll put it back in aperture priority. So the other way you can bracket your photos if you don't have auto bracketing is to use your exposure compensation button. And you should have a little button somewhere on your camera that looks like this, has the plus minus. Mine's on the top of my camera. And let's take our properly exposed picture first since we're here. Okay, we'll hit our exposure compensation button and we'll move it over to plus two. You see it gives me a lot of leeway here. I'll take one picture. Now, I'm in aperture priority now, so if I just start messing with my wheel again, it's taking my aperture away from F8. You don't want to do that. You have to hit the exposure compensation button again, and now we want to take it to minus 2. So there you go. We've bracketed our photos using three different methods. All of your cameras should have the exposure compensation button, and it's a prerequisite for this class that you have manual controls on your camera. So you should all have that. I actually think manual is a little easier to do than the exposure compensation because you have to hit the exposure compensation button in between. But you can use whatever mode you feel comfortable with.